if I was wandering oh. along some highway, you know, I'm talking like Book of Eli style, in the sand, some clapped out looking Glock 19, I'd be like, that dog, that dog will hunt. <laughs> 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 but if I was wandering yeah. along, yeah. <laughs> All right, what is up, everybody? Jim to my right, Mr. Ryan Muckenhern across from us right now. Now, if you're watching on YouTube, you are going to see a few Glocks on the table. And I guess a Glock variant, Jim, would that be fair we to say? We can get into whatever we want to call these. Okay, we'll get there. The question at hand is, is the Glock the perfect pistol now ryan we bring you on for any number of podcasts nearly all the podcasts but this one i really wanted you here because i thought you would be able to inject a lot of personal bias because i know that you think that the glock is the perfect pistol and i know that jim likes to be the contrarian at times and so that's one of the big reasons why you're here, other than I just I really like you guys and I enjoy your company. Thanks, Mark. It's great to be here. Uh, is the Glock the perfect pistol? A lot of people use it, Ryan. A lot of people in uh, professional settings mm. use it. Sure. Uh, a very uh, innovative design. The first polymer pistol? Question mark? No, I don't think so. No, can't be. No, I think there's there's... I would say the first commercially successful polymer pistol. Okay. Um, I'd have to, I'd have to go back. The P80, which we're going to look that up. The P80, which was the first Glock. That's forty years. Isn't that hard to four believe? Four decades. Of, yeah, but also like when you say forty years, that's nineteen eighty four. You know what I mean? I understand, but in the scheme of things, that's a long time on scene. Um, Are you saying that's a long time or not that long, Jim? I just we're. We are at the points in our lives where if I say the year 1984, I, I mean, I'm sure for you, it's for even me, I'm like, it's not that long ago. But then you're like, oh, that's 40 years ago. And right. Like, oh, whoa. Right. It's a bit of a disconnect there. I remember when the Glock, I, at least when I became aware of it, like coming on scene hard, and it was like a big deal. A lot of buzz. Yep. Buzz because it's so great. I personally think so. What do you, I've got my print out here? Well, there it took a long time, it, 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 a long time, and and still not even a hundred percent there for people to to accept it yep. as not a piece Toy. of Tupperware. Yeah, yep. you know what I mean. Like everybody would say, "Oh, you got that Tupperware gun," <laughs> and they didn't do themselves. Plastic gun. All oh. I can think about is Kip from Napoleon Dynamite, like. Backing, backing over, that over it with his orange right van, <laughs> yeah. Um, Dang it! They didn't do themselves any real service on the initial releases of like the let's say the P80 and the Gen One and early twos, be, and actually even early threes, I think, because they came in in like a Tupperware container. No way. Yes, I have I have some early Glocks, and they have like a. It's a very Tupperware. It's like what your mom would put <laughs> a sandwich and some. Goldfish crackers in for you. You have to kind of like peel yeah, off the. Yeah. Oh. And then they went to a snap lid clamshell. I was going to sure. say, that's, mine's a Gen 3, and that's what it is. Yeah. That, it's good. Yeah. I've got some old ones. I mean, it's it's very Tupperware esque, but they are they're remarkably different things than Tupperware. I feel like they did some genius things with their marketing sure. and sales strategy yep. and, and where they uh, entrenched themselves in law enforcement and things like that. It's funny you bring up entrenching. Why? Because Glock also makes an entrenching tool. Really? They make some odd stuff. Like they they make the thing that everyone knows them for, and that they just call a Glock. But Glock, the company, you you can occasionally run into th- where you're like, Glock makes that. Yeah. Okay, an exi- what's this this entrenching tool? What's it's it, a it, like, phenomenal what shovel. Really. And a very good field knife, and an interesting suppressor. The Glock Model 17 is called the Glock Model 17 because it was Gaston Glock's 17th patent. They got some cool stuff. I do. They the, have, their nomenclature, uh, I'm really happy that it was a 17th patent and all that, but mm-hmm. it seems to anyone who isn't as well-versed in it, even to me, and I, I still I still struggle with it, 
every single day someone's trying to tell me whatever Glock they have. It feels like they came up with their names in a random number generator. I mean, yeah. I mean, the Glock 22 is actually a 40, and the Glock 40 is actually a 10. And the Glock 45 is a 9. And the Glock 44 is 22. And the Glock 45 is bigger and smaller in some ways than a 19, and yeah. bigger and smaller in some ways than a Glock 17. But a 19 is smaller than a 17, even though 19 numerically is larger than 17. Yeah. But they're both 9 mil. Yeah. And it, what's I seven, hate that. What's 17 plus 19? Uh, not not the num- not 45. No. So if you add them together, you don't get 45. You get something, mate. 38? Something in there. It's about that number. I was never good at math. 36, 38. I'm having a hard time. You know what I do, though? I, I do like is I do like locks. They are just as good a pistol, I think, as, as you can get, especially for the Glocks money. Locks are nice, but are, are they the best? Well, it depends on what you're looking for in a pistol. Um, and so I danced around this personally for, for quite some time. Uh, Glock was not the first pistol that I got into. It wasn't the first pistol I carried. Um, it wasn't the first pistol I fancied, even. Um, I fancied a very different design. You fancied an HK, uh, didn't you? Well, Jim, the P7 yeah. uh, was high on the list. Yeah. And that's I was dating a gal whose dad um, is a, a, a firearms genius, and, and he was a big P7 guy. And I thought, like, oh, I mean, if he likes it, it's got to be good. And he's not wrong. Um, unobtainium. Right. So then I was kind of hooked up on the Walther P99 and okay. then I got hooked up on um, some small frame guns, namely a SIG 230, a SIG 232. Um, I had a wheel gun phase. I had a mouse gun phase. Hmm? Um, so mouse I gun. <laughs> mouse guns, small guns. Oh, okay. I, and micro this is, guns. yeah, I was a little, I'm embarrassed to even say it, um, that I did that for a period of time. Uh, it was a short, short period of time. Um and then uh, yeah, the little North American arms. I do have an NA Mini Derringer. That's different. Yeah, those are cool. Um, no, so I had a Breda thirty thirty two Tomcat um, Inox with uh, Crimson Trace laser grips on it, and I felt like a real sir when I had that gun. <laughs> <laughs> um, now I remember that because you like you go around making people call you sir. Correct. Mm-hmm. Um, and then um, I actually played I, a lot of poker for a while then too. Yeah. Correct. I actually traded that for a Glock. Um, and so let me. So, what was the catalyst for you? They're like, you know what? Not for not for me. I want to trade this in for a Glock. A couple of things. So, I was at the infancy of um, my we'll call it professional gun career. Um, so, I, I had always loved and and was enamored by firearms and could <clears throat> tell you all sorts of very random things about them. But the experience level that I had at that was one. I was a youth, and then it was only that which I was handed to or exposed to directly. Um, and then everything else was just kind of like theoretical knowledge. And then I started working in the firearm space uh, at a relatively young age. And so then I got to handle and take apart a whole bunch of stuff um, and compare and contrast the innards and the outards and, and um, get like firsthand uh, experience from people who are buying them or using them professionally. Uh, then I started shooting them a lot. Uh, and ultimately, I, I got my Glock Armor certification um, in 2007, I think. And that was a really cool class to go through and really neat to get to p- kind of peek behind that curtain and see what they're, what they've got going on. And we had other models of pistols there that we were looking at bits and pieces of, and of course the Glock palette. Uh, and then I started like shooting them a lot. Um, and then I started shooting competitively with them. Um, and th- they really answered every question that I had in a pistol. And w- or I had four a pistol rather. And then they had offerings that would suit kind of every need that I had. So I carried a Glock 19 for a period of time and then kind of changed wardrobe, um, kind of changed roles professionally. And then I carried a Glock 26. Um, I shot competitively with a model. You know, just real quick here, maybe describe the difference between a 19 and a 26. Sure. So, um, so as Jimmy was alluding to earlier, the, you will derive nothing out of looking at the numbers as far as... They just as, seem completely arbitrary. Yeah. Uh, and, maybe they're not. And th- No, they, they mean something. I mean, th- what they mean is the that's the model and then the patent. But 
Um, they're classified like a 26 is what we would call a subcompact. So I don't have an example of a 26 on the table here, but a 26 is a very small pistol. So it's a very short barrel, very short hilt or grip on the pistol. Um, you know, deep carry thing. So if you if you imagine this pistol, but with an abbreviated grip and okay. an abbreviated barrel, they're very short, stout little thing. Um, meant for deep carry. Uh, you know, you throw a t-shirt over the top of it when you're wearing a, a pair of shorts. I don't wear shorts, but um, you could... You like could ever? Like I, I kind of have a personal policy. I don't wear shorts to work. Correct. I don't know in why. In public, in public, I don't. Okay, yeah. like you. Oh. oh, you sometimes wear shorts not in public, though. Not in public. Like if you were going to the beach, like to bed, right? Yeah, I I don't go to the beach. What do you? Okay, uh, let's say you were going to the. It pool. was it was ninety degrees. It was ninety degrees this last week. Correct. Did you wear shorts last week? No. Never. No. Not you never. You go to bed in pants? Not never. I have a sleeping costume. It's like one of the... <laughs> Does it have a floppy hat? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know why that's unusual to people. Shorts are really... Con- I'm wearing shorts right now. I can't see your legs. I don't wear shorts. Not in public. Okay, we're gonna, we'll are gonna explore this we'll at a to, different yeah, we'll time. To we're going to get to the um, so whatever it, dark place you don't wear shorts anymore. So here's the deal. Um, I started carrying a Glock 19, which is a uh, kind of a, a compact pistol, not a full-size pistol. Like I look at a 17 as a Glock's full frame, right? Mm-hmm. So a 19 would have a slightly shorter frame and a slightly shorter barrel. Um, so it's a little bit more uh, compact than this. I don't have huge hands and my hand fits well on a 19. My hand fits a little bit better on a 17. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so I carried it. A, a the 19 is like a full size compact. Yeah. Um, mm, well, tech, the industry term is just straight up compact, but it's, it's also not tremendously compact. No, it's no, it's, it's not, it's, it's a big compact, right? Yeah. Um, I carried that for a long time. And part of this was, the holster style that I was carrying, um, I was wearing either like three o'clock on my hip or on the back, like small back, not directly mm-hmm. centered small back. And I actually uh, it started to kind of like beat me up. Like mm. the way I was wearing it, I was yeah. wearing it every single day. Um, the chair I was sitting in. I like, just, I remember like seeing, like every day you'd have, and I'm just like, how do you sit with that? Yeah. And I mean, it, it, it wore me down and I, I then switched to a 26 and then I switched holster position. So then I, I carried appendix as opposed to, you know, behind, behind my iliac crest, uh, on the backside of my hip. Um, and then I fell in love with, with that style of carry. And that's kind of the only way I do it anymore. But, um, I've also carried a 17, um, for a, a period there, I used to carry a 17 in the winter, um, because I, I subscribed to some doctrine that said, okay, well, I've got all these heavy clothes on. It doesn't matter. I could carry, my 34. I could carry my 17L if I wanted to, uh, but I carried a 17 for a brief period, um, and then went to a 26. And I carried the 26, which is a subcompact, that, that stubby little rascal, um, for a long time. And then, at, at some point in that time of me carrying it, Glock had introduced their slimline pistols, and they they kind of had one for a while, the Model 36, which is a slim 45, uh, which was a weird pistol. It was a single stack. Um, it had odd dimensions. It was approximately the size of a 26, but a little bit bigger. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't get on that train, but they, they came out with the model 42 and then the 43 and then the model 43 X and 48. And I resisted those pistols for a long time for no good reason. Other than it was just like, they were just a little too different for me. I ended up getting a 43 and a 43 X and I love them. And so now every day is a 43X. Um, so I have similar capacity to a 19. I think it carries better than my 26. Um, it, just, it has a longer barrel, right? Than, than the 26? Tw- yeah. Yep. Um, th- I'd have to look at the exact measurement. They're close. I find that actually the 26's barrel length, which is like 3 or 3.2 or something like yeah. that inches, is actually too short to be comfortably appendix carry. It because it, it actually rock. digs in yep. more in yeah. your pelvis than would a longer barrel, which almost kind of like stays nice and oh, up and yeah. down as I you see like bend over. I, yeah, I like it like a three and a half to four inch barrel. Jim is very fit, so I don't have that um, level of um, what's the word I'm looking for here, Mark? Fitness. Fitness, correct. Um, so I've got a little extra cushion <laughs> that kind of kicks my stuff out a little bit. So it, the pistol wears a little bit, but it does rock forward. So I. 
I know exactly what you're talking about there. Um, I think the reason that I went to the 43X though was was actually I you get a little bit more in the grip. Um, you get a negligible amount more length or or grip length. I guess it doesn't feel like I'm getting um, the, like the magazine or the, or the, the hilt of the pistol digging into my hip or anything like that. Um, and capacity. So I run a shield 15 round magazine. In it. So now I have 19 capacity in a gun that carries like a 26 without mm. having to go to an extended platform magazine. Right. Um, or anything like that. I mean, it's, it's the same contour of the pistol. So, I, okay. That was my really long explanation of why I thought Glock offered me a pistol for everything that I did. They do have that. When I shot competitively, um, I started with a 34. When I shot USPSA, um, I shouldn't say that. I started with a 17 in USPSA, got into a 34. Then I got into a Model 17L, which is the long slide version of this. It's even longer than a 34. Um, and I shot that in three gun and then USPSA limited minor um, for a while and love that pistol. I'm enamored with it. Um, and what I, what I don't make it anymore, do they? I think only in very, very limited runs, probably every two years. Oh. Yeah. What attracted me the most to the system, and this is somewhat of an adoption an adoption deal, right? So if, if you get into a given system, I guess you really like it because you're familiar with it, is my 26, the trigger was exactly the same place relative to like the web of my hand as it was on my 17L. These two are drastically different pistols. Okay. But my index points are identical on them. Um, the slide stop and slide release lever, the takedown levers, all the manipulations, all the controls, identical. Um, and so it, it didn't matter whether I was scooping my, my 26 up. There was no other things to try to think about when I was mm. pre- presenting that pistol. All the same with my 17L. Everything was identical. Um, and I really appreciated that. Um, and of course, they had and have an astounding track record of reliability uh you know and especially in professional capacity um if you if you do any you know looking around at uh pictures of uh, tier one operators more often than not they're running a glock right law enforcement um globally glock huge 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 uh you know presence in in the law enforcement community um and militaries like right not just not just the u.s um they're very simple uh their mechanisms are extremely robust in that simplicity um, there are things about them, you know, that, that people kind of poo poo, they don't have the same kind of trigger that you would expect on like a 1911, um, uh, remarkably different design though. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they are made out of polymer and some people are repulsed by that. Uh, I've never, I've never been dissuaded by that. I suppose they're chunky in comparison to a lot of pistols, you know, a bit block like, yeah, they're a bit Minecrafty. There's nothing. There's nothing um, necessarily elegant about the way that they're laid out. I mean, they're very utilitarian. It's right. a one by one block on top of a you know plastic grip, basically. Uh, but they're extremely utilitarian. You talked about, uh, or you mentioned their their innards and their their outards, uh, <laughs> as well as their simplicity. I mean. That is a lot of the beauty of the system, though, is, I mean, it is a simple system, easy to take down. Uh, That's about as far as you need to field strip a Glock. A little brake cleaner, a couple strategic lubrication points, your weapon's serviceable. Right. And also, some, does that simplicity breed reliability? I think so, yeah. Yep. Um, you know, there's there's all kinds of different torture tests out there of, of folks shooting any number of different pistols. Glocks are generally at the top of those lists um, for longevity uh, under duress in all kinds of conditions, frozen, full of sand, mud, etc. cetera. Um, and they've, they've done a really stellar job of, of putting their best foot forward as far as making, you know, absolute perfection. Ooh, that's part of their... Uh... Oh, yeah, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't... <laughs> I just don't know about the perfection thing. I I don't mind. Glo- I mean, two what, what of the you? guns on the counter right now uh, are mine, mm-hmm. but I don't know if they're perfect. Time out. I just yeah. don't. Well, if- okay. Well, I'm just gonna ask you. Another, you know, you spend a lot of time at Vortex Edge. Yeah. What's the predominant pistol of choice down there? Uh, fifty fifty Glock and Smith and Wesson. Now. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We started out ninety ten, I would say, and then we've we've migrated fifty fifty Glock and Smith and Wesson. Is that? And then some even sort at, of uh, Pete's even on like the CZ train now. He's, what, what, is he shooting competition? 
I mean, they all shoot competition. Maybe. But um, but uh, I have ad- I've adopted a few Smith & Wesson pistols as well. I kept my Glock pistols and get rid of them. And I, I like, com- I, there's aspects of the Glock that I like. There's aspects of the Smith & Wesson that I like. I just don't think okay, that Jim, Glock is so doing, time, oh, I don't qu- think that Glock is necessarily doing anything that's like ultra spectacular anymore. Well, they haven't changed since the P80. That's just it, though, right? And like a lot of other people have now made Gone their, their version of a Glock. Oh, so like I there's just a it. lot of there's a lot of examples <laughs> out there of that are also basically Glocks. Oh, yeah. And in some cases, they have you know more oh, features. Oh, so they're making it just for less time. Huh? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know. So I guess you know, forty years ago, Gaston Glock. Works his his keister off, and he comes up with the P80, which looks a lot like this Model 17 that we have here. This is a very modernized version, so the P80 had some things that were different. And he says to the industry, "I put forth to you the P80," and the industry's like, "Ah, a humbug! Ah, it'll never catch. No one will ever have a home computer. <laughs> it doesn't have a hammer or a grip safety." Right? Ooh, I want to talk about that too. And uh, doesn't have any safety. Gaston says. You know, thank you for your feedback. I'm going to continue producing the P80 and then the 17 and the 18, the 19, 20, 21, 22, so on and so forth, all the way up to 48 now, 49. Um, and what you're saying is the other companies now have come forth with the same thing. Yeah, it is like the same thing in a lot of ways. However, I also think it's different. Like they have their own unique takes on it. Oh, sure. Yes, I agree with that. So like with Smith & Wesson and... Uh, from what I've experienced, like even you've mentioned, like the, some of the Walthers and the CGs, yeah. they have their own, you know, versions of of what a Glock is now, polymer framed, handgun, uh, striker fired, all that good stuff. Um, I just I feel like you can get guns that are stock that are very similar to Glock and how they're constructed, but that come with a little bit better triggers. True. Uh, you know, that come with a few more. I don't know, maybe different bells and whistles, but. Like I think that the problem that they have though is that they they will never be the standard that the Glock is. I mean that that's where like kudos to Mr. Glock for coming out with what he did and sticking with it because he did ultimately become the standard. Um, you know, I mean everybody asks now if anybody ever comes out with a pistol caliber shooting anything, does it take Glock mags? Yep. Because yep. that's become a univer a universal standard for. Uh, anything that takes nine millimeter or just pistol caliber magazines does it take glock mags you have one of the other guns on the table right now that we mentioned earlier this is a palmetto state armory dagger which is essentially a slightly facelifted generation three glock 19 and uh i mean literally all the guts are the same though this has i pulled out of my uh a glock 19 whose frame i i i mangled a bit by trying to do some some home uh, home stippling and things, but I, I literally just pulled the Gen three Glock trigger out, put it in this. Same thing with the slide, the barrel, the recoil spring, uh, the you know like everything. It just straight off of a Glock and right into this dagger. And there are many examples of these facelifted now Generation three. I don't know. They're all Generation three always. Uh, Glock things. I don't know if that's because like patents have expired or something. But anyway. Um. They're the standard. I just don't know if it's the best. I can't, like, I haven't shot everything out there. I don't know if it's, so I can't say, like, what is definitively the best. But, like, I've never been a fan of saying something is the best just because it's the most ubiquitous or, the, or sure. has become the standard. I think that to assign best status, one would have to look at application. Um, and and then within that, like, subcats. So... You'd mentioned CZs, for instance, like uh, yeah. uh, the 75s uh, and the Shadows and all the other guns. Oh, like the yeah. uh, P10s. P10, yeah. Yeah. The P- yeah. Let's look at the 75, because the P10's a poly pistol, striker fired. There's a lot of... Okay. Yeah. Well, why are we looking at the 75? I mean, that's a steel frame Steel frame pistol, gun, right? Yeah. Right? But they're, like, they're an incredible pistol. Great gun, yeah. Uh, and they offer things to the shooter that the clock simply doesn't, right? And it's like frame to slide fit. Um, they're a tighter gun. Their triggers are unreal. Mm. Um, if that shooter was pursuant of those attributes in the pistol, there must be a specific reason for it, right? So if I wanted to achieve like a grandmaster status in USPSA competition, 
without concession to the Glock's trigger and amendment to that trigger, I would be stacking myself up against like CZ shooters, Tanfoglio shooters, um, 2011 shooters. Yeah. And in that, shooters. Yeah, yeah. In that comparison, like, no, I wouldn't be running the best. I would be, I would be running an absolutely adequate pistol, but not a formula one car. I'd right. be taking a very different vehicle to the track, um, compared to, compared to what the other racers are doing. And so I think like in that respect, yeah, if you're looking for a better trigger with a lighter brake, it's not a Glock. Right. Yeah. Or, you know, or a slightly better, I even hate to say this because I, I think that too many people make too big of a deal out of this, but like grip angle. Sure. The Glock has a very forward canted grip angle. And, you know, you get into that. That's one of the things that Smith & Wesson with their M&P series is always touted is the fact that they have a more natural grip angle similar to that of a 1911. And I, and I will say that there's something to it in terms of just the way that it naturally comes up. But the more you train with the Glock, the more you completely forget about that. It's not even really a, a, a big deal so much. But, like, to I don't your, know. To I, your you credit could, on that, though, guess who's got back straps after the fact? Glock. Smith & Wesson does, too. Well, they had it first. So, like, they improved, I think, that design. Who had it first? Smith. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then Glock. Glock, Glock followed with different back straps. Well, so good for you, them. You could, Do you, you could, think Glock's going to follow with a metal frame pistol like Smith & Wesson just came out with? You know, so there are a couple of aftermarket metal frames for Glocks. Interesting. Yeah. Um, but then you have to ask yourself, am I pouring too much money into a Glock when right. I could just get one right. of those other ones like we mentioned? That's very true. Um and where I was going to go is it's just not the same. It's not the same as a Glock in the hand after the trigger press. It's, yeah. It's a different gun. It's just kind of own animal. Yeah. I, um, I think Smith & Wesson with the M&P metal frame gun, That's a. I think that's a more intelligent route. Have you held that thing? Yeah. Brennan has one. Yeah. Oh. It feels You can't nice. even tell. No, it's nice. You, it just is amazing. Yeah. I don't. I don't know why that would hold merit here necessarily. Because to your point exactly, well, why are we doing it different? What What is it affording the user? Like mm. the user is selecting this platform for reason X, Y, or Z. Yeah. Um, Smith and Wesson has come out with a lot of competition based pistols yeah. uh, in the in the past couple of years. Um, they do a wonderful job at. I mean, their, their competition series guns are immaculate. Mm. Triggers are exceptional. Um, you know, their, their frame to slide fit feels better. Um, the recoil impulse on the metal guns, I, I have to shoot it side by side, up, you know, probably a hundred times to say like definitively, oh, this impulse is different. Or even if I can, I don't know, but, um, certainly an attractive thing, but is it necessary? I will say when I broached this question and I probably should have provided some context, I was thinking of it within the, the context of, Carry gun, workhorse gun, every man's gun. It's the best. Well, Mark, anybody who's getting into pistol shooting a lot, regardless of what it's for, should probably try getting into a little competition as well. It's really great. Well, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to say don't do that. I'm just saying. Okay, yes, you should do some competition. I'm just saying that maybe that's not like your primary. Well, you a know. lot of people won't. That's the thing. A lot of people won't. They'll be like, I'm going to shoot pistol a lot and get really good at it, but I'm not going to shoot competition. Right. Which is a poor way of looking at it. But a lot of people will do that. Maybe not the guy that's traveling around the country, you know, shooting pistol comps. Oh, yeah. To, to Jim's point, um, I think it is a really good idea. And I think that part of the reason why I stuck with Glock so hard is because I carried one. And then I shot one competitively and like that, it's like, okay, I carry that thing that I shoot competitively. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, like w- at least one day a week in like a formal league. And then I practice with it, like maintaining that muscle memory on my EDC as I was with my competitive shooting gun. I, I, was, I think everybody should shoot a weekly USPSA league. Really? Oh yeah. That. I went from recreationally shooting pistols and thinking I was somebody to being completely the bottom of the list. Mm-hmm. And like, oh, wow, am I not good at time management, at economy of motion, um, mag changes and man- manipulations under duress, diagnosing failure um, 
in the hand without having to take the gun apart. Like, why did that happen? Yeah. Um, and then figuring out how to fix it on the fly. Like, it's you're under the duress of the clock. You're competing with yourself. You're competing with other people to be better. Um, and just figuring out how to move and manage your equipment. Oh. A lot of people who think that they'd be John Wick in some, like, SHTF scenario would just absolutely bomb as soon as a beeper went off. Oh, and I did. Bad. Um, Kept thinking my sights were low left. (laughs) (laughs) Stupid things. Damn guns off. I'm running out of adjustment. Yep. Um, (laughs) Anyway, uh, so I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to go on a a tangent there, but for, for, for an all around gun though. Yeah. the, The thing that, the thing I guess that, I just I I'm not ready to call it the best, but it it is so good at everything. It's and if anybody ever asks like, hey, I I've never gotten a pistol before. What pistol should I get? Like my answer is pretty much almost always Glock. Sure, it's so easy to say just get a Glock because it's like there's nothing complex about it. There's not, you know, I mean, uh, we we brought it before, so like let's just say I, I, I'm not, okay. Uh, didn't. Didn't it somehow get misconstrued in a previous episode that that Jim is anti nineteen eleven? Correct. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I'm not because I, I actually yeah. I got a 1911 for Ryan, my graduation Ryan hates present. ARs. I love, right. Yeah. Jim hates 1911s. <laughs> <laughs> Grab your tomatoes. Well, some of these some of these guns like a 1911 or something like that that are like steel frame gun. You know, they got like the manual safety, maybe a grip safety, all this stuff. Like you kind of you get that gun and there's. You're not necessarily just out of the woods once you've bought that firearm. You know what I mean? Like hundred percent. You're gonna be fiddling around with these these little doinky magazines, and you know you're gonna be fiddling around with some reliability things. You're gonna be like, wait a minute, and then you're gonna be like, well, how do I disassemble this stinking thing? And I mean, there's like, oh, you're really convincing me that you do like 1911s right now. I do. I'm not saying it's hard. It's just that like we're talking. I'm in this case, I'm talking about somebody who. Like you're recommending their first gun, you get a Glock, you pull it out of the box, and it's just it's ready to go. It's done. It's you don't even think about anything. You can shoot, you can shoot tens and tens and tens of thousands of rounds with it exactly the way it came out of the box, and be totally fine. And uh, I don't know, maybe that's just what annoys me about it too, because I I kind of like to tinker with stuff. But it's you know what's really interesting. What? When we talk about cars, that stupid thing's got some sort of eyeball up on the front of it that tells you what's yeah, going on. Yeah, your Tacoma has a, it does, it has a camera in the front that's going to try and take over driving for you. And if I was like, okay, Jim, design me the perfect vehicle. You're like, well, it's got four wheels, but I have a gas and a diesel motor, I think, because... <laughs> <laughs> Okay. It has four wheel drive. It has a steering wheel. It only comes with a manual transmission. I don't even want, like, it's got seat belts. Doesn't have power windows. Nope. God, no. Oh, you're talking about uh, my idea. If you're just, yeah, yeah you know, if Which, you're going to. Hey, like, when are you doing that? My we'll point is, we'll get into it. My point is, what you have described is the Glock of trucks. But then uh-huh. you, you come up here, a man who I have so much admiration and look up to so much, you're like, you know, it just, it just. It is a little bit hypocritical. Yeah, it's got no camera on the front to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Where do I put the range finder? I, I don't know what to do with my hands right now, Jim. You and I are opposite in this regard, though. You went out, you bought yourself a brand new Tacoma. Well, that, you see that's how, it, you see ladies and gentlemen. This back on ladies you? and gentlemen, Ryan Muckenhern went out and bought a brand new Tacoma. He has not, uh, he has not yet given up his ways with just this like little, this little teacup truck and uh you just you were just like yeah whatever i don't care yeah all that all that safety stuff that's going to try and break for me or can take over the steering wheel and send me right off a cliff at any given point whenever it wishes uh yeah i don't care that's fine that it's on there but you then when it comes to firearms you're all uh, oh this one's extremely unique this is from this is a 1957 model a B series from the armory of uh, uh, John D. Wiley, and he had it sent off to this fame. You know, it's a like, very rare fire, and it was indeed. written about by this man in a, in an August edition of 1983's Guns and Ammo magazine. Like the, the, yeah. that's you. 
So we're just opposite in that regard. I look at the Glock. It's almost like a, it's like the Corvette. Like it does nothing, oh. nothing for me, and yet nothing. so much. And yet you see them at Le Mans racing against Ferraris, and you see them with chrome wheels and golf clubs in the back, going thirty-five <laughs> miles an hour with an insurance guy who's like seventy-eight years old, and he's driving to the golf course on like Monday at ten thirty a.m. I did. Hey, I did beat a vet off the line with the minivan the other day. Yeah, and was the man driving it? it what, did he look like he was actually? I don't. I don't really like, know. Should what he his looked, license have been suspended from just really know being too old? Like, I don't really know what he looked like, Jimmy. He your head. Rear, he your, was in my rearview mirror. Your head snapped back too fast in the G forces of the of the mini to. Yeah. So I have a question. The guy, the guy was. Did you set this up just to make this happen? I thought Jim loved Glocks. I didn't know he didn't like Glocks. I don't Glocks. not love Glocks. They just don't do anything for me. You know he they can't do help but be contrary when it comes to firearms. They do nothing for me. I'd act, I'd, this one came out of left field. I thought he would have looked at this and be like, you know, in simplicity is oh, the, the, the reality of perfection. Let me ask you this. So I do have a question because- I just um, want to know, are you, trying, you, are you trying to- um, yeah, get, This is like uh, reality television where they, you know, you just- manufacture conflict and the beauty of it is is it doesn't bother me because i'm not part of it oh yeah you're fine yeah just kind of flying whatever the wall. um as this style of pistol has become more popular i guess it, you know across manufacturers with you know different nuances a little bit of different form factor hmm. um are <laughs> Are the things, and I guess maybe I'm answering my own question just as I talk through this, but it sounds like the things that made Glocks unique are, I guess, more commonplace. So, like, they're less unique now, I guess. Sure. Yeah. See, yeah, I see where you're going. And I think what you're talking about is, like, the striker fire design. All yeah. The which is, which is not fired. uniquely Glocks, but I would say commercial, like, popularity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No manual safety. Correct. Like, yeah. These are all now what I believe are meritable attributes of functional pistols. Right. Yeah. I mean, a lot of things that um, make Glocks so great or pistols that are similar in, you know, form and function so great are things that it seems to me initially with Glocks were so, some people took exception to. Sure. Oh yeah, the no safety thing. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean that would be that would be one for when, sure. When I was selling guns, uh, a lot of folks, you know, I'm looking for a pistol. You know, I'm going to carry it. I'm going to shoot it on the range or use it for home defense. So like, I grab a Glock 17. They're like, no, there's there's no safety. I'm like, well, there's three, but can so please um, expound on that a little bit. Okay. So um, when this pistol is down. It, like you cannot get the firing pin to go forward. There's a physical barrier and block within the slide that has to be actuated by a trigger pull, which in turn pulls the firing pin or striker back under spring tension, moves a block, and then once you get to the you know, the sear engage, disengage point, then the firing pin's allowed to go forward, right? And so within that process, there are like three distinct things that, that have to happen. One, there's this little inner trigger shoe um, that has to be pulled. You can't pull the trigger with side pressure. Like, mm -hmm. it's not going to work. I have to move that out of the way, so one. And then in the pulling of the trigger, we're pulling the thing back. It's it's in a decocked position, and we're bringing it to a cocked position. There's two. And then our firing pin safety, like, block, like the physical thing that's preventing that <clears throat> pin striker, excuse me, from moving forward, um, gets disengaged, three. So the thing can only fire when you pull it all the way deliberately back to fire. It's alien when you look at, say, a 1911 that has a grip safety on the back of the pistol's grip itself. Like, the trigger can't function, even if the hammer's back and the manual selector's in the fire position, unless that grip safety is disengaged. And I think that's advantageous. I think that's a meritable thing. I don't mm -hmm. think it's a big deal. My, my counter to that is, okay... So it's a handgun. We're probably using it if it's in a defensive situation, in a close quarter situation, and my assailant strikes my pistol in an attempt to get it out of my hand. I re 
gained most of my control over it, but now I've missed the grip safety and I can't pull the trigger until I re-index on the pistol. Get on it. Okay, sure. Um, they have a manual safety on the side, sometimes ambidextrous. That has to be moved out of the way. Um, again, I don't think that's a big deal because I own them and shoot them and they're fine. Uh, but if you've got big hands, large thumbs, and you ride them high, you might inadvertently engage that safety. Um, and then that particular pistol is a single action pistol. So it, it has to be in a cocked position in order to fire it. Now, with that note, so if, if I want to draw a 1911 from the holster and engage target in, in like rapid manner, that means I have to have that hammer back and I have to have that safety engaged. They call cocked and locked. Um, so now the only thing standing between me and a discharging of that firearm is one, my grip safety is intact, and two, I disengage that, and then three, I hit that thing. I have to remember how to do those things, so under duress. So I can't just pull it out and bang. I have to pull it out and disengage and then bang. Um, and I have to be holding it a special way. Right. Which is not unnatural. I'm, I'm kind of exaggerating. No, it's not so. You can't, like, really make too big of a deal of it. But at yeah. the same time, like. I don't feel like you can. Do, um, it's something you have to train yep. in order for it to become subconscious. Yep. And it's nice when most of your training doesn't have to consist of how to make my gun work. And most of yeah. your training consists of how to shoot better. Yeah. I will uh, say when I, yeah, the first night I shot USPSA single stack, <laughs> the first thing I did is I drew my pistol and I went like this. I came up on a holster and went, yeah, oh yeah, click, bang. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that was funny. Um, but to your point, like it's a training thing. Just it's a training thing. Learn. You have to train to learn how to use parts of the Glock just as much as you would at 1911, but it's sure. just different parts, right? Not all polymer frame pistols are exactly like the Glock. Many of them are. There's that one that goes off if you look at it funny or if you drop it on the ground wrong or yeah, if, yeah, uh, you no think good. about it on like a Tuesday or something like that. Instead of on a Monday. Right. Yeah. yeah. Bang. Yeah. Don't do that. Bang. Yeah. Look out. It's like a jack in the box. Yeah. <laughs> you don't really know. Well, how many wind ups did I do on that? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, what about accessories? Wow, well, I mean, Jim's got these things pretty well adorned. I mean, if somebody makes an accessory or a holster in the industry, they make one for a Glock. And if they make it for anything else, that's they another probably, thing that makes it so easy, though. If they make it for anything else, they probably make it for a Smith and Wesson M&P. And if they make it for anything else in addition to that, then at, at that point, it's it's anyone's guess. But uh, yeah, I, that, I know I'm not saying I don't like the Glock. Okay, I'm just saying I don't. I, I haven't. And I'm not saying it's the, it's the only gun. pistol because there's lots of great pistols out there. That's so. true. Um, and I do own other pistols. It's it's hard to not recommend. C- correct. You were talking about the triggers earlier, though. Yeah. They do have a pretty consistent trigger pull. Yes. They do, but it's a very um, industrial trigger pull. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll put it that way. It's very. It, they. The trigger pull that was achieved was achieved as a result of the way it was manufactured, not achieved by way of we would like to have this trigger pull and we will design the pistol around it, Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. What about um, a person I imagine can change that, yes? There are a number of um, aftermarket options out there that will change the way the Glock trigger feels. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this one is an aftermarket, although it's not particularly light. It's just crispier. Uh, it's just not so gritty feeling. It's it, you know it feels a little bit more like less mass produced. Oh, that's quite pleasant. Yeah, I don't like that. Or I don't mind that at all. I think this it's quite nice. And then that one's definitely stock. That's very true. <laughs> um, yeah, they're they're not a they're not a race gun trigger, and they no. were, they were never designed to be right. So right. They're a they're a uh, military and law enforcement use trigger, and um, like they are an Acme trigger. They, <laughs> Industrial. They do the thing that they are supposed to do. Uh, there are definitely better options out there if you're a uh, person pursuant of, you know, a lighter. I don't, do we use the word match grade trigger? 
in this context? I don't know. Competition. Trigger. I never look at a Glock as that gun, though. So here's where I'm coming There's around. gun. It's never going to be an open gun. You can right. You can put you red can pour dots. All the money. Yeah, into it. and you're just not to the same animal. No, like um, a, like a really highly polished, hand finished 2011, yeah. or yeah, you know, one of those CZs, like we mentioned, like those shadows, or you know, something like that. Okay, I I get it now. I know where Jim's coming from. The Glock is not the perfect pistol, but that depends. Right. Yeah. Okay. I get it. They do a lot of things really, really good. They do. They do. They do many things. You can Cerakote it and make it look super cool and get a lot of likes on Instagram. You can mm. you can use it in any training class ever unless you want some super specific, like, you know, open USPSA training class. You can use it for home defense, concealed care. You can use it for basically anything. And that's great. <laughs> if you're into that. Uh, <laughs> but maybe maybe you're not into that, Jim. Or maybe you just want to switch things up a little bit. Experiment a little bit. Get a little weird. Sure. Like college. Let's talk about... You were there? Uh, conversion kits, Ryan. Sure. Oh. <laughs> It's an option. It is an option. There's, uh, I think at press time, I'll have to Google this. I think there are two. Um, are you talking like 22 LR conversions? I'm talking about like, I, I saw people. Just turning your Glock into other stuff. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah they're like, like um, what's that car that everybody likes? Some, uh, the Honda Civic? Yeah. I mean, one of many. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of different plug and play options. I think. You can turn it into a carbine looking thing. That's what I was oh, that's what I'm talking you about. Can turn oh, it into oh, a, I was, oh, I was trying to shoot, get a picture here. Sure. You can make it shoot twenty two L R. Yep. So um yeah, there's there's a couple of really radical things that you can do with these things. Um putting them into what do you call those? Well, they call them conversions. Yeah. Um, but you turn this into a carbine. Yeah. Okay. You can turn this into an SBR. You can. You can get that Roni thing. Yep. You can get the I played with one. It was like reactor tactical or something like sure. that. It was this funny little, uh, funny little folding stock deal that would like, like fold that's up what one side of it kind of turn into a. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we're talking. That one's uh, that's the Roni. Yeah. So like a chassis that you, um, like a spaceship, it abducts the pistol. <laughs> <laughs> it does. <laughs> and then uh, the the pistol stays the same, right? Uh, the user is afforded uh, a little bit more control because of this chassis system um, that would then have it like a stock and then, you know, a barrel shroud um, and things like this. Um, so it, you're then holding it with two hands as opposed to one. Um, yeah. Uh, caliber conversions are a thing that I used to see a lot more. I see a lot less now. Um, there have been a couple of barrel companies come and gone um, in the in the time and space in which I've been goofing around with Glocks. Um, where, you know, if you had a, say you had a Glock 10 millimeter, you had a Model 20, you could get a 40 Smith & Wesson barrel for it, um, which was interesting. You could get a 9x25 Dillon barrel. Shout out to the 9x25 Dillon guy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> One guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which is a super cool cartridge. Um, you you could get some different caliber conversions that would fit the respective frames, right? Um, those were pretty hot for a while. Um the 22 LR uppers, uh, they've kind of come and gone. Glock answered that call with the Model 44. Uh, sure. Uh, sort of. Um, oh, yeah, they have a factory 22. Yep. Yeah. And um, neat little gun, a fun little trainer. It reminds you mostly of your Glock when you're using it. Um, and, yeah, I mean, there's there's a ton of aftermarket stuff you can get for them. Like, I don't have a, quote, race-tuned Glock, but, like, my 17L, I have a different recoil spring in. I have a radically different trigger in um i have different trigger spring um striker spring uh safety plunger spring uh, that's all been amended on the gun um mag wells yeah magazine extensions mm -hmm. regular accoutrement i course. mean the magazines themselves like i mentioned a lot of times yep. if anybody makes a pistol caliber firing anything uh, like Ruger's nine mil uh pistol caliber carbine thing um marlin just came out with one that looks pretty slick 
a lot of people have them. A lot of AR 9 millimeters that have lower receivers that are dedicated to taking Glock 9 mil mags, stuff like that. I mean, it's it's everybody wants to try and make whatever they have work with Glock stuff. Sure. So, um, I mean, that is, if you have, if, whatever pistol route you go is a little bit like if you go Apple or Android. And if you go Apple, it's really hard to have a mixture of Apple and Android devices. You know what I mean? Like, if you've got an Android pad thing, whatever they call it, a tablet, and then if you have an, an Apple iPhone, like, they don't talk to each other. If you have a, if you have a Smith & Wesson carry gun and then a Glock training competition gun or home defense gun, you, the, the magazines don't interchange, like none of the parts interchange, and you, 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 now you have to get like double the amount of magazines you would have gotten. You got to get, you know, two different holsters probably. Like there's all kinds of different yeah. stuff that you have to get. And, uh, you know, so like that's the one thing you do need to consider. So like if you're going to go Glock, the nice thing is, since so many people try and make everything around Glock, is that like, well, hey, I, I have a Glock 17. All my magazines would work with this Marlin Marlin nine mil carbine thing that just came out that looks super cool. So then you know you don't have to buy new magazines for it; it just goes right in. That is really nice. Um, and then something that Ryan said made me think of something else. Corvettes. I can't remember. Oh no! Not gosh, dang it! I try what? to not think about Corvettes as much as possible on any given day. But why don't you like them? Did you? It, 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 like. There's an image that comes along with with Corvette ownership, and it's oh, a, um, it's it's you know I, I just I don't even want to get into it. Okay, I don't even want to get it because someone's probably listening to the Corvette right now. <laughs> but uh, so they're probably listening in the Corvette right now, and they're probably of a demographic where they may need to listen to us with the volume quite high. Hey, now I suffer because from... they're in a convertible. Okay. <laughs> But also, they would need to listen to the volume quite high. It's a hot summer day. Why uh, wouldn't they be in their convertible? Right. Yeah, they probably have golf clubs clacking around in the back. Um, that should speak to the functionality of that uber affordable supercar. No, no. Do you know when they made the new one? They made the trunk. They like they desi- They said we have to fit golf clubs in the back. Do you realize that? How messed up is that? Hey, we're gonna make this really fast supercar thing. But but designing it around the fact that it has to carry golf clubs. Heaven forbid they make it work optimally for the person driving it. So I'm surprised it didn't Jim, come. I'm surprised it didn't based fast. on based on the the demographic. The demographic. I'm surprised it doesn't come with a Rolodex in the in the dash. With a bunch of people who need insurance. You know Anyways, what? with three. Okay, <laughs> so. <laughs> Um, pretty handy if you need to make a phone call. You were, we were talking about the Roni thing, the carbine yeah. thing. I think that's actually pretty cool because if oh, you yeah. get if you do a Roni conversion, and let's say let's say you go you go all out, uh, and you do like the SBR thing, you do have to you do like an SBR and actually get the uh, you know something you're going to manufacture an SBR, so you got to get laser engraving or something done on the frame of your Glock, right? Um, is how it would be done on the frame. Yeah. And then, uh, but anyway, let's say you do that. Maybe. It's pretty cool because I think. That's how it works. Yeah, because I'm well, thinking it. specifically the Roni itself. What so some of the ones that I saw looked can, like they had more of a brace than uh Yeah, they do have those. But like if you can also just like full on just SBR. Oh, okay, gotcha. My question is that I remove the pistol from the conversion. Yeah. I then have a pistol. Oh. So if I insert if the brace abducts oh, the pistol. Yeah. What is that's I actually never at, thought about that. I, I like, don't, can you just like, <laughs> I'm well, a rifle, I'm a pistol, because you can't no, really do that. No, something, something would have to bear the burden of that um, tax amendment there. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Because yeah, you can't. Yeah. That's Mostly because I don't have that. I have a PCC that takes Glock mags. Yeah. What I was getting yeah. at, okay, let's say you do, let's, let's get out of the day. Let's say you do a brace one. Uh, stick pistol in, a, it's abducted <laughs> by the chassis. Lady and now you have down. more control over that, uh, and you can use it for whether it's just for fun or whatever reason you see to have that. But then you, it drops from the chassis, and it's a pistol again. And you can then like stick it in your appendix holster and off you go. Conceal it. It's That's kind of neat. It's very clever. 
That's and that other like one that a, I played with, kind of like a twofer. That other one that I played with, Major Gun, look uh, a lot like an MP7. Mm. And I liked that about mm. it. I liked okay. that about it a lot. I spoke with a gentleman uh, on the telephone who was um, attached to a very elite level um, of operators yeah. in the United States Armed Forces, and they were using those. MP7s or what? Nope. Those things. Oh, the things yeah. that go, the shoulder the, things that go the up. The shoulder Correct. thing that goes up. Okay. And so we were trying to, um, they had a very specific holster requirement. Uh, it was a drop leg, like a thigh rig. Mm-hmm. Uh, that it fit into, and we were trying to optimize which optic was going to go on that for not only that means of use, but uh, also if that device was um, removed, damaged, or destroyed right. as a pistol, what was what was most functional. Mm. It was a riveting conversation. It was very curious. That would be riveting. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, um, yeah those are cool. I mean, it, it just in the fur- a further example of how Glocks can can have many faces. Yes. You know what else is neat about Glocks? And there are very few pistols that, pistol families, lineages, or otherwise. Glock has a, a machine pistol produced to this day. The G18. The G18. So cool. 1,200 rounds per minute. Surprisingly controllable. Oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't guess that. It, for what it is. <laughs> it, it's, it was amazing. Could you fit it on, like, like if you were standing at, Seven to ten yards. Could you keep it all on one of those target backers we have on the fifty yard range down at the range? Like, yes, you could keep them all on that. Yes, with that's some practice. Sure. Yeah, that's impressive. And the pistol looks no different than this, except on the side, there's a small switch um, <laughs> that takes you from regular semi-automatic fire to twelve hundred rounds per minute. We should all be able to just buy these things. I agree. Oh, and I then am... if we were able to. Glock wouldn't sell anything else. I agree. <laughs> um, very interesting that that they did that, um, and that they have that and still a thing. Yeah. The Beretta has a ninety three. Had a ninety three. I don't know if they still make it, um, which is a machine pistol version of the ninety two. Uh, very interesting. Had a little forward flipping hand. Grip. Oh, I love that thing. Yeah. Uh, Looks factory cool. Fac- yeah, factory compensated barrel. Um, to my knowledge. That might be it um, in the conventional pistol realm. Not, I'll have to go back in on that. Um, we yeah, had not counting like Mac tens. Correct. Yeah, thing. we're we're talking about like a true submachine at that point in time. Um, so I think that's super neat about them. I also love how many of them there are, and you got to catch them all. <laughs> Do you have any of the three fifty seven Sig ones? I don't. But What's I was the deal with that cartridge, Ryan. Tell Mister Cartridge Man. So that cartridge was a an answer to a problem that kind of existed at one point in time, and that was uh, the determined by somebody inag- inadequacy of the nine millimeter standalone. Okay, yeah. So we've, we've kind of had that, that that discussion has come up. Yep. In the past. We went away from a three fifty seven. Magnum revolver yes. as a as a standard issue option for a lot of law enforcement, um, and then we went into semi-automatic pistols of you name your flavor, whether it's a Smith and Wesson fifty nine oh six, a nineteen eleven, a Glock pattern, what, whatever it was, um, and uh, pursuant of a better terminal solution, but without getting the recoil of say a ten millimeter auto. Um, or without going to the frame size of a 10 millimeter auto, or some of the reported issues that people had with a 40 Smith and Wesson, enter 357 Sig. So, 40 Smith and Wesson esque case, neck down to nine millimeter. Um, it's a bottleneck pistol cartridge. Yeah, that's clipping along considerably faster than like a regular nine millimeter. So, bigger case, more volume, more bang, more punch. Um, and and getting close to what a three fifty seven Magnum could offer in this frame pistol. Boy, why didn't that become a thing? I mean, it did for a a brief period. I almost bought one at one point. I, I was, was curious. very hot to trot on three fifty seven Sig. I think what happened, and and we've talked about this um, when we did uh, handgun terminal ballistics, is bullet technology, powder technology, got the nine millimeter up to par with everything else. And, and it somewhat became a moot point. So if I was running a, a Glock 357 Sig, so there's three sizes of that. There's this 
regular size. Full size. Yep. So that's a 31. And then there's a 32, which is the size of a 19, and then a 33, which is the size of a 26. Um, because they use a 40 Smith & Wesson-esque case for their base case, you, re- you lose magazine capacity. So now when I can take a 9 millimeter and I can up its terminal performance window considerably, um, it, is, it makes less sense for me to have slightly more recoil, definitely less rounds in the same size pistol. Yeah. Glock even had their own cartridge, um, 45 GAP, Glock Auto Pistol which was a really neat idea um, that put all of the terminal ballistics of 45 ACP into this platform, into a 17-sized frame, uh, but at a major capacity loss. And that was like a super fast flash in the pan. That was right around that time. It was like 2007 um, when, I, when I went through that armorer's course where we were having a heavy conversation about 45 GAP. And then just like that, it was gone. Um, mm. I, I've talked to a couple of police departments that issued 45 GAP that uh, ultimately went to 9 millimeter or 45 ACP as officer preference. Yeah. Um, and GAP was a short lived thing. It's kind of like when my buddy Neil bought a mini disc player. I forgot about those. Yeah. Is that different than a laser disc? Yeah. It's, it's like a mini, mini CD. They're like CDs that were like this big. Oh. And oh, oh, like what GameCube used. Oh, maybe. I don't know. I mean, they were like the size of this. Yeah. Yeah, just little fellers. That's what I used to get for my game. Hey, MC Ryan, you remember that? Is that what GameCube used? Yeah. So 40, 40, 40. <laughs> right? So that's a really good question. Um, and it's funny to think about that, like that transitionary period. And perhaps why Glock has so many models is because those gaps and cracks had to be filled at one point in time. Mm-hmm. Um, it seems like projectile technology, cartridge technology, propellant technology has brought us to a, a space and place in which um, something that has been the standard for a long time was at one time looked at kind of as anemic and then now brought up to certainly adequate standards. Um, 357 SIG is still a hell of a round. So is 40 Smith & Wesson, so is 10 millimeter auto, so is 45 ACP, but right. 9 millimeters just... Pfft. It's... Yeah. We figured it out. Yeah. Yeah. Seemingly. Yeah. Um, man, I, just, I like clocks, I guess. Yeah, I like them. While I have the luxury to do so and be picky, I'll be picky and I, I don't know if it's perfect, but I was just thinking about this. Like, let's say, because we've talked about prepping a little bit lately. Oh, mm-hmm. sure. Mm-hmm. If I was wandering oh. along some highway, you know, I'm talking like Book of Eli style, right? And I see in the in the sand because we're in the Dust Bowl. Clearly, there's been a, a, a great drought. <laughs> uh, in the sand, some clapped out looking Glock 19 of unknown generation. I'd be like, Sweet. that dog, that dog will hunt. <laughs> 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 but if I was wandering yeah. along, yeah, if ah. I, yeah. If I saw pretty much anything else. There be a question mark in my head. That was that was going to be my que- uh, my question for you, Jim. Would be like you know like you've got multiple pistols. You know the guys at the range are using multiple pistols, but all of a sudden, the world gets weird, and you can take just one. Which one are you going to reach for? Glock. Yeah, easy, easy. I'll find parts for it under a rock, off of all of my adversaries, <laughs> and. uh and it's just you never you never worry about it. It may not be perfect, but it's not that imperfect. <laughs> I don't know. This is a fun conversation. Yeah. What are your thoughts, Mark? You know, I mean, you guys are way bigger pistol guys than I am. But I am, when it comes to that sort of thing, like very utilitarian. And, you know, that's what I've had forever. It's probably what I'll get again. I mean, Jim, you brought up the phone thing. You know what I mean? Like, my first smartphone was an iPhone. That's probably why every subsequent smartphone has been an iPhone, because I kind of know how it works. Right. It's yeah, And you're just... You're stuck with it. Yeah. Because at some point along the lines, you probably got a MacBook. I too. didn't, actually. Maybe you didn't. What do you have a... You Microsoft Some guy? Sort of, I mean, so before I, when you I was, a PC uh, guy? 
Uh, Cabela's, I had a Mac. But then when I got here, they all we had was PCs. Now it seems like you kind of have the option. When you're at Cabela's, did you guys run like Windows 98? One, Windows 1? I don't XP? know. XP? That sounds about right. I don't know. I don't there was know. a time when I fired up the computer here at work at Vortex, and I remember it. Da, na, na, na. Or maybe that was when you were turning it off. No, it was like, da, na, or whatever. Yeah, it was I think Windows it was 98. Like, yeah, it went up. Yeah, it did. Startup. And then when you turn it off, it, da, na, na, na. But I remember that a Windows 98 with the little flag would be on my screen as I'd boot up my computer, mostly just to play computer games at work because I was like you know, 10. But <laughs> After you'd printed off the instructions to cheat <laughs> To codes. the Legend of Zelda. That was <laughs> just, uh, and you are now printing page one of 536. Oh, no. Barb was pissed. Oh, no. Uh, love it. Toner was low. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know what was around then? It was Glocks. And when we're not printing anything anymore, just uploads to our brain, Glock will be there. <laughs> You're not wrong. You're not wrong. I'll probably still be able to use the same magazines. Yeah. That's the only thing I've ever had uh, really go south on me on a Glock was a magazine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. really? Too many times, hit the ground. Oh, crack. sure. Ping, springs flew out, pieces went everywhere. And you're just like, I'll just buy another one for, or or I'll buy something off Palmetto and probably get like 15 of them for free with yeah. it or, you know. Yeah. Lift up this rock, find it, grab it. There it is, take it. It is pretty neat, uh, the amount of scrutiny the pistol received at, uh, you know, on its um, inception. A lot of skepticism. And now. For what it's like. Uh, and now it's just here, like. Well, it's here, and, and I guess it's like, it. The, it's so weird because the things that people were like, I don't know about that or I don't like that, like that's what people celebrate now. Yeah. Yeah, I used to have a, a customer he's since passed. Um, he still carried a wheel gun um, on duty uh, when when I was around. And he, we were having a, having a spirited conversation one night outside the shop. And said, what, 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 what pistol are you carrying? He's like, Glock. Jesus. Got in his car and drove away. <laughs> <laughs> he, I think he carried a Ruger Security 6. Um, yeah, that was funny. <laughs> he smoked uh, He smoked unfiltered camel cigarettes Ooh, wow. and lit them with matches. Oh, I love God, that. Yeah, he was a man. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That, that is something fantastic. Else. I got to need to carry anything. Nope. That was something else, but... No, they are they are truly in, in many ways at this point. Glock does. I will, some people give Glock some crap, maybe myself included at times. But uh, what can they do to change from here? You know what I mean? Like we're on Glock Gen Five. Yeah. Oh, what six. we've gotten since Gen One is some some stippling interchangeable back straps. Yep. Optics compatibility. Front serrations. Ambidextrous slide release. Front serrations. I'm listing all things that are very... People appreciate them as updates, but they're benign. Yeah. Like, the thing hasn't been reinvented no. at all, uh, functionally speaking. No. So, like, you know, sometimes people are like, oh, the Glock hasn't come out with anything new and forever. And it's like, well, wouldn't you, would people be kind of annoyed if they did come out with something new? Because they'd be like, well, no, i got to get new magazines. Like what? <laughs> you make a good point. Like, so I'm deeply vested in Glock. You probably got like a, a buttload of parts for him. Yeah. And if something came out, man, I'd be, I'd be almost weird. Well, I was. So when they came out with uh, the 42, the 43, and the 43X oh, and 48X, you have to get some new stuff. I was like, man, that's goofy. I don't like it. Um, you, what was the difference? Just just very, nothing and everything at the same time. So, f- for instance, the 42 is a micro pistol. It's 380. I have one. It's adorable and small. And it looks like you just put this in the shrink ray path and just pew, yeah. shrunk it down. Single stack, holds six rounds of 380 ACP. Oh. It, it's like the size of a uh, intact Dorito chip. When you get lucky and you pull it out of the bag and the whole thing is there. Mm. Um, and I held it in my hand and I was like, why, why would you do this? <laughs> and, and like, I was unnecessarily resistant to the pistol for a very long time. Um, and same thing with the 43, the 43 is like the nine millimeter version of the 42. And then the 43 X came out. 
So that was like a stack and a half instead of a single stack. And so the factory magazine, I actually have a factory 10 round magazine right here for a 43 X. Um, so Not it's like a standard a, mag. Nope. It's a, it's, it's in betwixt the size. Mm. Um, and the 48, it was like, I don't get it. They made, um, a slightly narrower version of this that has, um, a similar feel to this, but less capacity, albeit it is more concealable. Did I really get there? I was looking at some other pistols from other companies that, that were out and about that were running higher capacities in a different magazine. And like I got into this kind of rut where I'm just like, not nah, too weird to live, too rare to die. I was not interested in it. And then finally one day I'm just like, screw it. I'm like, I'm, I'm going to just order. You know what I did? I shot one. Coworker got one. She got a pistol and she's like, um, you know, I want to learn more about this. So we went down to the range. She got a 43 X. I'd handled them, never fired them. I was that much of a stick in the mud about it. And she handed it to me and she's like, well, you shoot it. And we had a, a, a standard dipstick target up and I was like, okay, let's see what it can do. And two alpha, two alpha, two in the head box. I was like, man, that's quite nice. Mm-hmm. And then the, the deal was sealed and then I ordered one up. I got a shield 15 round magazine for it. I've just been pleased as a bunch. Um, so if something came out, I think I, that was like radically new. Like what could you do? It's, I don't know. I don't know what they could do. I changed grip angle, but I mean, even the other companies that are coming out with their versions of clocks. You know, they have their own little, yep. little changes and things like that. I do think, like I said, the Smith and Wesson that came out with the middle frame is ab- is an absolute just. It, it's beautiful. I think an M and P uh, is a, just a different animal altogether. Kind of, kind of. Yeah. But you know, it's it, even still though. It's it's sort of like eh, is it kind of six and one half dozen the other when you compare it to the Glock, sort of. But like if. So, I just don't know what somebody could do to come up with something that's like totally new, but in the same vein as yeah. this. Yeah. I don't know that you'd find meaningful change unless it was just radical. I mean, unless we start shooting lasers. Yeah. Right. You know, Glocks are probably going to be a lot like this in 40 years. You still need something to shoot the laser. <laughs> Can you yeah. imagine Glock comes out with the laser gun? Everybody's got these Jetson looking things, and Glock's just got a brick that <laughs> shoots lasers. <laughs> Still got the same industrial feeling trick, Acme it, trigger. So, the slide the doesn't. The them. slide doesn't need to reciprocate, but it, it does. does. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Um, okay, so in classic comparison fashion, it does everything you need it to do. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a something for everybody in the Glock lineup. Um, you can put a smattering of accessories on it. Mm. Mm-hmm. The grip angle is not a problem once you once you bring it to the range and fire it. A lot of accessories are have become the standard. Yep. Mm. To Jim's point, it's not a race gun. You can get it there. It's not the perfect gun. It's just is it probably perfect the m- for some things. Sure, but that's I think everything could it's, be perfect. It's or just probably the really good, most universal and easy to adopt gun, other than like the AR-15. But we're talking about pistols here. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think that's all fair. It might not be the perfect pistol, but it's a damn good one. Yep, yep. Uh, gentlemen, I've enjoyed our our, our uh, Glock talk. Good Glock talk. Good Glock talk. Maybe we'll talk about some other pistols, too. Because there's other really good ones out there. Oh, yeah. You know what I think is one more little note? Yeah, what? The Glock has been on scene long enough that there are rare and hard-to-find models. Wow. Give us a couple. Pebble frame guns. Repeat. Pebble frame. Oh, so that's what I thought you said the first time. Yeah. (laughs) Um, The texturing. So if you remember, I don't have an example of a Gen 3 texture. Uh, yeah, and though. I, I don't have an example of a Gen 2 texture. So, like, the Gen 2 had no finger grooves, right? right? Right. Pebble frames had, like, a different texture. And then there's the RTF frames. And they had shark, like, shark gill. Oh, yeah. Well, yours has been stippled. Yeah, it's stippled, but it's different. got the finger so grooves Glock, in it, though. Uh, excuse me. Mark had a Glock 19 here the whole time. We just didn't look at it. It's just that Mark's Glock 19 is... It's nice for when I got it's it. It's that one I described that I found in the book of Eli. 
<laughs> I I hope there's no po- no pop couple. Yeah, apocalypse. you'd pick it up. You'd be like, what the? And that's <laughs> the like, one. I hope you find uh, my Glock, Jim. Oh, yeah, okay, probably. Why. It's just, eh, well, that dog will hunt. Yeah. I hope you're like, oh, like, what holy. was he doing? Eh, okay. Um. Yeah. So there's like the RTF. Yeah. That that rough, rough textured finish, and they oh. have like, how would I describe this? Uh, so you know, like you buy like industrial hook and loop. It's not Velcro, but it's hook and loop, and it yeah. has way sharper hooks. Oh yeah, that's what the RTF feels like. And then it had shark gills instead of vertical serrations on the slide. Oh, that sounds cool. coveted pistol. The oh, long slide series. So like I have a 17L and a Model 24. So these are 6.02 inch barreled guns. Wow. Um, oh, yeah. you. There's the very coveted can't get them in the U.S. 380s because they don't fit 922R compliance. Um, so they're a fixed breech gun, like a Walther PPK, but they look like a Glock. Oh. Yep. Hmm. Um, so that's the uh, the Model 28 and the Model 25. Hmm. And those are rare and hard to come by. Um, of course, Glock 18s are rare because they're a class 3 item. What was Gaston Glocks 1 through 16? Uh, so I used to know this. Were but they it, even guns? No. No, they were like manufacturing or war machine things. I cannot remember what they were. I'm yeah. going to check out the shovel that you brought up. In the Dude, beginning. the Glock and Trenching tool. It's an excellent tool. They're affordable. Like, you got a knife in the handle. A saw. Keep in your got, truck? Uh, yes. I got pretty nice pens, too. Yep, old Glock oh. pens. I had a Glock mug. Got it. Got that armor's course. I had that mug up until we moved to this building. Mm-hmm. Did mm-hmm. not survive. What happened? It, Drop it. No, it died in transit. Um, coveted mug. I'm a. I'm kind of a sentimental fool, but um, yeah. But like I said, it, rear gl- rear guns. Original P80s rear gun. Yeah. Um, they actually had a re-release of the P80 like a year or two ago, where you could buy it, and it came in like the retro case, and was a throwback to the P80. So they deleted the accessory rail on it, and. Um, which is interesting, and gave it the old frame and said P80 on it. Neat. Um, then there's like... Uh, what did Polymer 80 think of that? Well, I don't know. Hmm. I mean, Glock was the original. Yeah. So. Then then there's like um, <laughs> like different different forces used different guns, and they had different nomenclature, although they were the same thing. Like oh. the 17L was... Um, uh, oh, was it South America? It was a, it was like a an anti terrorist pistol. You need a long barrel for terrorists. Yeah, correct. Um, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, there's that's, there's such that's neat, interesting though. Such that's neat, a, that's that's a good. I'm glad you brought that up. And, and they've been, they've been around, been around long around. enough. Like, I would love if someone like Silencer Co. Whoever it, was, it is to to come out with an integrally suppressed Glock, sure. like they did with the M and P. Yeah, mm. I think it would look great. I think it'd be great. Yeah, be fun. really cool. Be cool. Clock makes a suppressor. It's disposable. Great in Europe. Not so much here. I've only. I don't really want to wait eight months plus. Well, it's, good for, for, it's good for. It's good for the old recycling It's good bin. for a magazine. Yep. Yeah, definitely not waiting. Just slips right on for over. That. It's made out of polymer. Does a good no job. No kidding. That's it's wild. Kind of a well rod esque almost. It's wild. So it's just, I mean, it's square. It's very simple looking. Just take it and you squeeze it on there. It's good for mag. Rip it off. Unbelievable. Yep. That's cool. That was super neat. Super I'm neat. Look that That's up. super assassin. I want to see that. Uh, yeah, it was 45 ACP. I think it was for the Model 21. Interesting. Yep. Well. That's what I know. All sorts of good stuff. Did we miss anything? <laughs> Not that I'm aware of. Well, there, there you have it, folks. Is the Glock the perfect pistol? Ryan says yes. I'd say it comes pretty damn close. Jim's wishy-washy. It's not perfect. It's just really great. It's just. Really I'm good. glad you said great, not good. Because <laughs> I thought you were say good, and I was like, damn it. <laughs> but, I, didn't, uh, I, I hesitated. I was going to say good. And I, just... I mean this when I ask this question. It's nice. What do you think is yes. the perfect pistol? Is there a pistol that you think we should have talked about in this pistol's place? Is there another pistol that you want us to talk about? There are lots of great pistols out there. Mm-hmm. Our search for the perfect pistol. I don't know. Maybe there isn't one. 
Maybe there isn't one. Maybe it's just that unicorn you'll never catch. I don't know. Let us know. What do you think is the perfect pistol? Until next time, happy hunting, shooting. Shoot straight. And uh, we hope you find the perfect pistol. Bye. 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 There you have it, folks. Thank you very much for listening. As usual, give this video a like if you liked it. Comment something below and give us a subscribe to the Vortex Nation podcast channel. It would mean a lot to us. Also, why don't you give us a follow over on Instagram while you're at it, at Vortex Nation Podcast. We'd love to hear from you over there, and we'll keep you updated with all kinds of cool photos and videos from our adventures that we do here. Otherwise, we will see you on the next one. Thank you again. Happy hunting and shooting, everybody. Have a good one.